So if your head is tipped back even half an inch as opposed to resting on top of your spine in a poised position, if your head's tipped back, your mobility and sensory awareness will be seriously affected. There are more joints in the neck than anywhere else in the body, so when you tip the head back, consequently compress the neck, this act sends layers of compression rippling out throughout the body, throughout the torso, making everything compress and smaller. So as a result, movement, speech, and breathing becomes more difficult. So I'm reading the second volume of Dr. Jerome Staring's book, The First 43 Years of the Life of F.M. Alexander. He says this habit, this tradition, this attitude of tilting the head back and down is unconsciously learned by children in Western countries. This is an unconsciously learned mannerism. And it almost becomes a second nature to people in industrialized countries to permanently bear their heads tilted back and down once they grow to maturity. This mannerism is closely related with the use of artifacts while eating. At present, almost everybody in Western society uses forks at the table, not using them as called uncivilized behavior. In case we see somebody eating with his fingers, we get feelings of disgust. So we teach our children to eat with forks, and while we have forgotten that the fork originated as a symbol of distinction, we tell our children that it's not a hygienic to use fingers instead of forks. So there are certain physiological and functional anatomical consequences of using forks at the table. See, hunter-gatherers use their front teeth less as cutting tools than as clamps. So there's a bite of hunter-gatherers both today and in the past. It's one where the upper and lower incisors meet edge to edge like a pair of pincers. So while we use forks at the table, as from the time our parents or caretakers teach us the civilized way of eating, we do not have to use our incisors while eating. Now mandibles will not be stretched out time and time again at every meal we take because we do not tear off small parts of food from bigger parts. So therefore our incisors do not wear, that our molars do not wear too. Our molars do not wear because we do not eat hard food or raw and unprepared food. So we do not have to substantially grind our food. So our molars are not used as a kind of third hand. But the mandible gradually develops a retracted, retrusive position while it's almost never stretched out as a consequence of the civilized way of making use of all the muscles which are put to use when we're eating, swallowing, when we are speaking. So in fact, our civilized way of using these muscles will affect the levels of sensory awareness of the muscle spindles. Or well, this will, as a matter of fact, influence the pharyngeal space. The space important for breathing processes will narrow more or less when circumstances of activity differ. As a result, we unconsciously reposition the hyoid bone forward and upward and we tilt our head back in order to counteract the negative breathing consequences. So during dentition and after that time we gradually develop the habit of repositioning the hyoid bone forward and up. We develop the habit of tilting the head back during many physical activities. So tilting the head back involves muscles between the head and cervical and also thoracic vertebra and between the head and the shoulder blades. So in a way, the head will be habitually more or less firmly attached on the atlas. So this will affect our posture and every movement of the body as a whole. When the head is held firmly on the atlas by somewhat contracted muscles, which have one ending at the basis of the head, you can imagine that the muscle spindles of the first intervertebral muscles cannot help optimally in operating a movement of the body as a whole. So the most important physiological phenomenon connected with the sense of tilting the head back and down, the tendency of deranged kinesthetic sensory appreciation. So people who are afflicted with the habit of tilting the head back and down continuously show inefficient movement and inefficient patterns of movement, they even show inefficient ways of thinking.